As we wrap up Washington Commanders training camp, there's one word we use to describe what we've seen these last five weeks. It's competition, but that's only the top of what we've learned here in Washington Commanders training camp. That and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. You are Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome in, everybody, to today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for Sports Illustrated's CommanderGameDay.com. Of course, I'm here with you every Monday through Friday. Greatly appreciate you coming through today. Every day is greatly appreciate you coming through every day for your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders. If you haven't already, please subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you are listening to today's episode where you're going to hear from Washington Commanders linebacker Bobby Wagner. We're going to talk about Jaden Daniels and other players not playing in the preseason finale against the New England Patriots. We're going to start off by wrapping up the last five weeks of Washington Commanders training camp. If you want to discuss any of that or anything else going on with the Washington Commanders, all you got to do is reach out and send me a text message. And you can do that by going to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders today. Become an insider. You can text me and I'm going to text you all kinds of information, updates, exclusive content. We've got an, an insider exclusive Zoom meeting coming on Saturday afternoon. So if you want to get in on that and come hang out with a bunch of us, then do that. Join subtext.com slash locked on commanders to sign up today. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started on that. So Friday out here in Ashburn, wrapping up Washington Bears training camp, five weeks of practices, evaluations, releases, signings, trades, uh, all kinds of stuff going on. And overall, no matter what was happening, no matter what the next opponent was, no matter what the next day was, pads or no pads, the theme of the entire training camp has been competition. And what's really refreshing about that is in years past, when we go to the end of training camp and we try to identify the theme, typically that theme doesn't necessarily marry up all the time with what the coaching staff has been preaching leading into the preseason, leading into training camp all through the offseason. But really from day one, from the moment Josh Harris made the decision to replace a, a large portion of the front office and the coaching staff, he's been talking about wanting to bring in a competitive organization or build a competitive organization, I should say, and bring in the people that are going to help return Washington football into a competitive brand on the NFL field. And that started with the hiring of Adam Peters and through the hiring of head coach Dan Quinn and the coaching staff and the front office changes all through it. The message has been consistent. So coming into rookie camp, mini camp, uh, uh, the OTA period, and then training camp, it's really not a surprise, but unfortunately it also is kind of a surprise to go through this process and see on the field, what you're hearing at the microphone and then talking to the assistant coaches and the coordinators and kind of hearing this common thread. But then again, going to the field and seeing all these things happen. And it goes beyond just what's happening on the practice field and obviously on the NFL field as well. Even in the trades and the roster moves that this team has, has conducted or has executed during this period, you see them all kind of going towards one common thread. And that is building and maintaining and creating ultimately because this, this roster that I think you're going to all kind of get to know over the the main portion of Dan Quinn and Adam Peters' time here in Washington is not even close. Like, I think in 2026, most of the players on this roster, even today, are probably not going to be here. But the theme through all of them has been competition, right? Whether it's going through to your fourth kicker on the roster and granted the first kicker release for non-competitive reasons. But again, you're going to uphold a standard of conduct, a standard of what being a commander means and a standard of what this organization is going to stand for. You have to make the decision they made there. You bring in other kickers in that name of competition. People prove that they're not part of the organization. They're not part of this theme they're trying to build. So you go ahead and you move them out and you bring in another guy. Now, whether or not Cade York is going to be uh, the fourth time is the charm guy and, and prove that he's the kicker for this organization, that's still uh, to be seen. Obviously, they've got to field somebody. So something's happening. But even today on Friday, talking to Dan Quinn, he even talked about that position as being a competition. There's only one guy on the roster but there's still a competition. We'll get into that here a little bit as well as we go through it. But then you look at the trade for Jahan Dotson, right? Jahan is a guy that we've talked about extensively on this program throughout training camp. And he's just a guy that outside of really one practice, it was a very well-timed practice because it was also the day he came up the hill into the media tent and did his media session with us, his official uh, media session with us. But outside of that one day of practice, really has not been a consistent presence for his quarterback, whether it be Jaden, Marcus, whoever he was catching passes from. Then you guys have seen it 
in the preseason games as well, getting as many reps as, as really as, as feasibly possible uh, for a guy that you're hoping is going to be a contributor to your team and still just not able to find that ability uh, to produce. Meanwhile, guys like Alameda Zacchaeus and, and, and Luke McCaffrey and uh, De'Ami Brown are out there competing and they're producing, and that's exactly uh, the thread that this team is following. So when you look at it through that lens, really not a surprise that that kind of a move was made here towards the end of training camp. So that's the theme, right? Everything that kind of has happened through these training camp five weeks, you can draw all the way back to competition, uh, no matter what they're what they're doing. So I think that's it's and again, it's, it's it's encouraging because now the people who are making the decisions and and choosing the pathways that this team is going to follow are consistent in their messaging, consistent in their branding, and should be encouraging for you guys because it kind of gives you an idea of what to expect. Bottom line is, you see a guy out there throughout the season who's not competing, he's not being a competitive member of the organization, he's not being that aggressive type of player, that fast football player that Joe Wood Jr. wants on defense and that explosive player that Cliff Kingsbury wants on offense, then when you go in the offseason, you kind of get a picture, kind of get an image of what's probably going to happen uh, coming up. That's a long time from now. Let's, keep, let's stick to training camp here. Uh, we have standouts here. My three, my top three standouts, and it, it's really kind of hard because there's really been a lot of impressive guys out here like Johnny Newton. I mean, only a couple days of practice, right? And that's unfortunate, obviously. But those couple days of practice do look really good. Brandon Coleman has kind of missed a little bit of time but he looked really solid when, when he was healthy and was able to go out there and be a full participant. And then even guys like Dante Fowler Jr., you could see that edge presence and that speed coming out of there. So it's kind of hard to narrow it down to just three, but I do want to stick to three, and I want to stick to kind of the, the training camp practices uh, as well. So Jaden Daniels, obviously, is going to be standout number one, coming in as a rookie. You know, again, we've talked about him extensively throughout this process and just being the, the ultimate, you know, kind of mature professional for a young NFL player and certainly a little bit older than some NFL rookies are. So. He's got that going for him and the experiences of going from Arizona State to LSU and being on the national stage, winning the Heisman Trophy, I think certainly serving him well. But then also the lack of pressure on him to come in and be the hero uh, of the Washington Commanders organization. I think that plays a big part into his ability to impress everybody with his conduct and his uh, preparation. So Jaden Daniels clearly a standout here from the training camp portion, so you got to name him. But another one, Bryson Tremaine, wide receiver Bryson Tremaine, one of the taller guys on the roster, would certainly like to see this team kind of have that diversity on the roster. You've got some kind of average height guys, 6'1", 6'2", who have the ability to get upfield, but also operate in the near uh, short interim part of the field. And then you've got your speedsters out there, guys like Jamison Crowder, but then you're you're lacking a little bit in the height department and the ability to kind of go up and get the ball maybe in the red zone or in the corner. I think that, that's where Bryson Tremaine could potentially come in. Now I stick to Bryson as a training camp standout because unfortunately he hasn't really shown up in the preseason games. And that's, uh, that's a concern, right? Because you definitely, I think you weigh the game tape over you do the practice tape. So you would like to see Bryson Tremaine take advantage of this last preseason game, go out there uh, and show a little bit of what he's been showing in practice. Because I'll tell you right now, even on Friday, it wasn't exactly the most competitive practice, grain of salt, right? Bryson Tremaine made another nice grab uh, on Friday as well. And finally, safety Tyler Owens, undrafted free agent out of Texas Tech. He's a guy that we've talked about a lot on the show as well. Uh, my my 53-man roster projection is going to drop on Monday. Uh, so I've, so I've, I'm going to be working on that. So keep an eye out for that. We'll do our post game. Sunday night, Monday morning, whenever the game is over, live from the from the surface of Commander Field. But then my 53-man roster projection will drop Monday later on in the morning or the afternoon uh, ahead of Tuesday's cut-down day, and then we'll come back and react to all of the uh, the moves that were made. Tyler Owens is a guy that, you know, I think he could make this roster. I think he's got a fighting chance to make this roster. And on Sunday, uh, you know, has been battling a little bit of health issues. So depending on how much he can go and how much he does go, I think, you know, he has the ability to kind of show this team once and for all, like, I'm a guy you need to keep on this roster. Of course, we got standouts. We got to have letdowns. I don't want to harp too much on these letdowns, but we do have to identify them. I think Jahan Dotson clearly is a letdown from this training camp. Uh, that's what leads to his uh, departure to Philadelphia. So I don't think we need to talk too much more about that. If you missed that whole conversation, go back to our last episode. It was all about the Jahan Dotson trade. So you can catch all that over there. But tight end Cole Turner uh, has been another person who's kind of a letdown. I was talking to somebody uh, today at practice on, on Friday and the thing with Cole Turner I really not, kind of noticed is from his rookie season, right? Rookie minicamp, the year he comes in the NFL, really stands out, really impressive. The problem with Cole Turner is since then to now, really hasn't advanced, really hasn't improved in any area. hasn't gotten better as a receiver, better as a catcher. He certainly hasn't gotten better as a blocker. And in fact, now, towards the end of training camp, into the preseason, he's actually starting to drop some passes. And that's incredibly uh, disturbing or, or discouraging because I think what you're seeing is maybe a young guy who's kind of getting into his head a little bit and it's starting to impact even what he's supposed to be strong in. And if you're a guy, a tight end who's not known as a blocker, but is known as a pass catcher, you got to be able to catch those passes. 
and then the cornerbacks. That's that's an area that I think a lot of us are concerned about going into the season. How are these perimeter corners going to stack up against legit NFL competition? I do expect Benjamin St. Juice, Emmanuel Forbes, Michael Davis to all get reps in this final preseason game. Um, and I hope they get a good amount of them because they need as much work as they can get. We'll see uh, what, what they do ahead, ahead of the regular season because regular season week one, it just starts hot and heavy. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Jalen McMillan, Trey Palmer, uh, and ben Baker Mayfield, the ultimate gambler out there. So they're definitely going to have some shots taken against them. So those are my three kind of letdowns, people that we're looking for, position groups that we're looking for as well. But there are preseason battles that need to wrap up. And we've got some players that are already identified not playing Sunday night against the New England Patriots. That's all coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What are your self-care non-negotiables? Maybe you go to the gym every day and you never skip that leg day. Maybe you wake up every morning and meditate or go to bed every night and meditate before then. Maybe you do yoga every day or maybe it's therapy day or it should be therapy day because bottom line is when your schedule is hectic maybe it's packed with kids activities work projects got you going or your friends and family are pulling you each and every which way your priorities can oftentimes suffer honestly we kind of feel guilty from time to time don't we when we do things that only make us happy you start to feel a little bit selfish well if you talk to somebody who can see your life from a third party view you might find out that it's actually very important to do those things that might even only be for you and if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. So never skip therapy day as part of your self-care maintenance program with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Dan Quinn revealed on Friday after practice that Jaden Daniels, the starting quarterback of the Washington Commanders, will not play in Sunday night's contest against the New England Patriots, but he is not alone. Thank you for making Locked On Commanders your first listen today and every day for your second listen, check out the Locked On Fantasy Football Podcast. Get your daily insight into the best fantasy draft strategies so that you can win your league this season. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Jane Daniels not playing in the preseason finale. Not a complete surprise. Honestly, kind of coming into the week, I've done a couple of radio hits where I was asked if I thought Jane Daniels was going to play. And specifically, I just kind of said, no, I don't think so. I think he's, he's done enough. He's proven enough. The team is satisfied enough with where he's at to enter the regular season. There's really not a much to gain by putting him back out there for a third preseason game compared to what you risk losing if, you know, disaster were to strike during that preseason game. So not really surprised. And then he's got a lot of reps in these final training camp practices as well. So again, that kind of leaned into, uh, you know, the opinion that he's probably not going to play. So Coach Coach Quinn uh, verifying that on Friday, but also verifying that defensive tackle Deron Payne, defensive end Cleveland Farrell, defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. Also not going to play. Now, Dante Fowler Jr. is interesting because he hasn't really been practicing or playing at all uh, for the last two or three weeks, really, uh, with what they've said is a soft tissue issue. Not sure exactly which part of the body that soft tissue uh, is in, because uh, they don't have to tell us this time of year. But Dan Quinn did say that both he and Cleveland Farrell should be good to ramp up for the regular season after the preseason concludes and that time comes. So that's good news. You're going to have those guys in the Doris Armstrong out there as well. But there's also some guys that you can just kind of assume aren't playing, right? Jerron Payne's not playing. Jonathan Allen, not going to play. He hasn't played in the preseason at all either linebacker Bobby Wagner hasn't you know played in the preseason uh, at all anymore so if Jane Daniels isn't playing you also assume Terry McLaurin isn't going to be out there tight end Zach Ertz has yet to play a preseason snap so you assume that's going to stay the trend but then also I think you look at running backs Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler if, again if Jaden's not out there not much of a reason to put those two guys out there and I think that there's a big reason to keep them out especially so you can find out who you have in these other backs as you go to decide that third running back spot. Do you keep a fourth running back on the active roster? And if you keep three or four, regardless, who do you aim to uh, to put on the practice squad? Uh, as guys like Michael Wiley have certainly done some work to put themselves in that conversation. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong Jr., don't think that he's probably going to play either. And then Frankie Lou. Frankie has actually been playing in the preseason while Bobby Wagner has been sitting out. But I do uh, I do expect Frankie Lou to be one of the players sitting out Sunday night. So those are the ones I'm pretty sure on, the guys I'm kind of like 50-50 on. The starting offensive line. Look, you can make a case for the starting offensive line. Starting quarterback's not in there. Sit the starting offensive line. However, you can also make the case that every rep you can get together is going to be incredibly valuable. I don't think that Brandon Coleman would be ready to go yet for the preseason game. So you're talking about four-fifths of the starting offensive line getting out there along with Cornelius, Cornelius Lucas uh, ideally being the left tackle. But you could make a case for, you know, even if it's just one series, getting out there a little bit. So I'm not 100% certain that that starting O-line won't be out there, to be honest with you. 
Running back Jeremy McNichols, we've talked uh, extensively on this show about that third running back job behind Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler. In the beginning, it was Jeremy McNichols and Chris Rodriguez battling for it. I think at this point, Jeremy McNichols has far you know, extended himself beyond what Chris Rodriguez has been able to show. In fact, I think now the competition goes into if there's a fourth running back, is it Chris Rodriguez or is it Michael Wiley, right? Um, so that's kind of how far this competition has gone. So if the team feel, feels like you know Jeremy McNichols is our third running back, they may just decide to sit him and let Chris Rodriguez and Michael Wiley and other guys get some of those reps back there as well. So I'm kind of 50-50 on him. Uh, Alameda Zacchaeus, De'Ami Brown, same boat. You know, you could justify getting in them reps, uh, even if it's only for a series or two before sitting them down. I could also justify them not getting any reps at all. Jeremy Chin is also a guy. Now, it's interesting there is like Quan Martin is still a young safety, first full preseason training camp being that free safety. So you, I think you want to give him uh, some reps. And if he's back there, do you, you want to put his, crime, his partner in crime, Jeremy Chin, back there with him? Again, you can make that case. You could also make the case that he doesn't need him back there to get the work that he's in. And, I mean, I guess Quan Martin, for that matter, too, you can see them sit him because these safeties, uh, the safety decisions are going to be interesting to watch as well. And that's one of the battles that we're going to watch in this final preseason game because there's still, even without all those starters out there, there's definitely still reasons to watch this game. And I think reason number one, kicker Cade York. I mean, we all know how kickers work, right? We don't really pay attention to the kickers unless they're super great, like Justin Tucker in Baltimore, or they're super bad, like three kickers that you know this team has had this, uh, this preseason for various reasons. Cade York is that fourth. Maybe fourth time is the charm. Uh, other kickers are still competing. That's what Dan Quinn says, that that's still an open competition. The way they're competing is simple. They're still kicking field goals for other teams. The young kid in Tennessee, Austin Seibert in New York, they're still kicking for other teams, and they're still putting stats out there. Uh, these are guys who are going to become available after cutdown day. So Cade York goes out there. If he nails all of his kicks, maybe he gives himself that advantage from being in-house. They've gotten to know him a little bit, and he gives himself the edge there. But if he goes out there and botches this, then I think you potentially see a cutdown day waiver claim put in. Uh, and Cade York potentially on the outside looking in. Also going to keep an eye on the safeties and linebackers. On defense, sure, you want to look at some of those depth players like Michael Walker, uh, the linebacker, Anthony Pittman, also Percy Butler, Derek Forrest. But I think you also need to pay attention to special teams, especially kickoff coverage and kickoff return. Which of these guys is really being impactful? Which of them is being consistent in these avenues? Because I asked Dan Quinn on Friday in the press conference, you know, it, it used to be that linebackers, large tight ends, mostly linebackers, but also large tight ends, kind of have an advantage at the bottom of the roster because you need those guys for special teams, coverage teams, and return teams. But now with the new shift in the kickoff rule, you're actually seeing more and more teams. And I got to give a shout out to the Miami Dolphins because honestly, I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to this until we went to Miami and they were paying a lot of attention to it. Kind of drew my attention to it. So I got to give a hat tip to them. But a lot more defensive backs, sp safety specifically, are being used in these kickoff coverage and return teams than linebackers were previously. And I asked Dan Quinn about that. He said, that, yeah, in fact, I mean, he gave a longer answer, but I'm going to wrap it up by saying that, in fact, that shift in advantage at the bottom of the roster has really kind of shifted towards more your defensive backs, your Jeremy Reeves type of guys than it has the linebackers. So that's an interesting uh, uh, relationship to kind of watch. And when you're, if, you're, if you're one of those football nerds like, like me that, who puts together your own 53-man roster projection, keep that in mind, you know, where teams will keep like four or five linebackers at times just because they need those special teams guys now you may be keeping five safeties instead of five linebackers uh, because of what you need to do uh, with special teams. And then, of course, that third running back position, if Jeremy McNichols does play, then to me that signifies that that third job is still kind of open. I, again, I think Jeremy McNichols would have to be really bad to lose it anyway. But if he plays, then that does mean that that job is potentially open. But if it's not, that fourth running back spot, again, if there's a fourth running back on the active roster or even who's your priority to go on the practice squad because those spots are limited as well, Chris Rodriguez and Michael Wiley are going to be battling out for that. Uh, on the receiver group, six receiver. So I think on this roster, I'm pretty confident in saying Terry McLaurin, De'Ami Brown, Alameda Zacchaeus, Luke McCaffrey, Jamison Crowder are going to make the active roster. That's five guys. Now the question is, do you keep six or seven? Uh, the commanders are not, they're not only going to keep five. You're going to get at least six and you might get seven. If you're getting six or seven, who's next, right? You got guys like Bryson Tremaine, Martavis Bryant, Byron Pringle, Davion Davis. You know, I've kind of got my favorites, you know what I mean? But I think this is a game where if you're a guy like Bryson Tremaine or like Martavis Bryant or like Byron Pringle who thinks you have kind of a claim to stake for this final roster spot, this is your opportunity to go out there, put it on tape, put it in front of the coaches, and tell them that you're the guy for the job. And then finally, that fourth tight end job, Cole Turner. Look, I, I think Cole Turner, for as much as he's disappointed uh, this training camp, I think he still is that fourth tight end. So has he... 
I don't say he's regressed, but has he had struggles enough that this team says we're not going to keep a fourth tight end, we'll use that roster spot somewhere else, or is he solidified as that fourth tight end? I think this game's going to tell a lot. If he goes out there and drops a lot of, a lot of passes, draws flags in the blocking game, can't secure a block, I think he's going to, he has the opportunity and potential to open up a conversation inside the building of whether or not you keep three or four tight ends. But I think they really want to keep four. But again, if, if it's a guy that, you know, we just saw it with Jahan Dotson, if you're a guy who can't just do what this team needs you to do, be successful, they're not going to justify keeping you around. So I think Cole Turner is certainly someone to watch heading into this final preseason game. Love the kid. So I'm fully pulling for him. Hope that he blows it out the water uh, and just completely kills this conversation. But right now, it's definitely there. Speaking of conversations, linebacker Bobby Wagner met with media uh, briefly following practice on Friday. So we'll get you a tape of that scrum coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. And when you're hiring for your small business, you're going to want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. And that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. But LinkedIn isn't just any other job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to your role if it's the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong places. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn because LinkedIn even knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats, they don't always have the right amount of time or resources to hire properly. So they're constantly finding ways to make that process easier. Two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. So post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Wrapping up today's episode of Locked On Commanders here in Ashburn, Virginia today. Wrapping up training camp out here. 2024 training camp in the books. And we're going to wrap it all up by talking with linebacker Bobby Wagner. Emotional day, though, because the team won't look like this again. Oh, you said emotional day. I was like, what happened? You know, the team has it. It's going to be different from Tuesday. So, you know, how do you... This is my 13th one of those. So, um, I just try to help with the encouragement. And, you know, understand this is not the only team out there. So, even if this doesn't make out here, there's other opportunities. And then, of course, Sunday, you know, looking at that game, a great opportunity for a lot of those guys that are fighting for a spot. And how do you kind of approach that for them and offer them that advice? Same thing. Just be supportive, um, you know, provide whatever knowledge I have to help them. But really just let them play free because it's, you know, a lot of pressure, a lot of thinking. You just want them to be as free as possible. Bobby, what have you learned most about this team during training camp? Um, just how special we can be. Um, you know, just being able to learn learn the guys, understand how they play. You know, I think... Um, the energy of this team and organization has changed, and I feel like it's up to us to kind of uh, display that once we got there on the field. Bobby, you've, we've seen you talking with Jay after reps and things like that. Am what? I talking, or is it him? Is it him <laughs> talking? <laughs> like he starts it. He's a, no, like I he's it. learning from you, I think. Has he, what's been oh, that relationship like? You mentioned you right, right. and stuff like that. Um, it's been great. He's been, uh, been really cool uh, just to be able to, to talk Talk with them, you know, like you said, have somebody from where you're from, um, understand the pathway to get to everything. But it's been fun. He talks a lot of trash. Um, he says he's good at basketball. I see um, something, somebody posted something, but he's not good at basketball. So he can't beat me. <laughs> As a response for his, his shot. I think he's telling you Kyrie. He said you think you're Kyrie. Uncle Drew. That's what I said. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Coming up next, the next time you hear from me will be Sunday live after the preseason finale. Uh, again, we'll do our 15-minute or so live hit on the field uh, after the game, so make sure you're coming through for that. Have those notifications turned on. It's going to be late. So if you're still up or if you're getting up uh, with me, uh, by all means, come through for that. Of course, if you're not, it'll be available uh, on recording because that's the great thing about technology. And then we'll be dropping our 53-man roster projection on Monday, if you want to take part in the insider exclusive Zoom meeting happening Saturday afternoon, all you got to do is go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on commanders and you will be part of that group as well. Next up, make locked on fantasy football podcast your next listen of the day. And as always, thank you for making locked on commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, thanks for coming through like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out and about, please be safe, be kind, and I will see you next time 
for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.